So thank you, Wendy, for coming and uh, sharing some of what you're doing with uh, uh, Out of the Box in Schools. Do you want to just tell us a little bit about your background and, and why you're going in? Hi, well, I'm Wendy and I'm, I'm from the Isle of Man. I, I used to teach um, in the local primary school here. Um, I retired only a few years ago. Uh, I approached the head teacher about going in to do some, some work voluntarily. Um, because I, I know how valuable it, it is in schools to have volunteers to, to come in and work. And so I worked with um, one of the PPA teachers and uh, she would take half the class for music and I would take half the class to do some story work with them. And that could be godly play stories to cover the RE curriculum or it was out of the box stories to work on well-being and philosophy and other sorts of issues that we were trying to cover by using those materials. Mm, fantastic, thank you. And um, so you've had experience with one particular class over a few weeks, is, is that right? Um, I've actually uh, worked with almost all the year groups, uh, other than the oh. very, very little ones. So there was, um, yeah, I was able to, I had some mixed year groups and some separate year groups, but but it was only really like the reception class that I didn't actually have. And so it was, it was quite interesting to just do the same story on all the different age groups to see the different mm. kinds of reactions um, and, and to, to have that insight of to how different age children, depending on their development, will respond to a story in a different way. So that was quite an insight, really. Mm, great. And uh, can you just take us through what happens in the session and um, how long you've got and what happens? Right. Well, what happens is that uh, the, the, the teacher brings the half the class in in to the hall where I do the story and I do a little settling activity usually usually we light a candle and we talk about respect for each other uh, just to sort of settle the children and because respect is one of the core principles of the school and so the head teacher likes me to tick that box as well so <laughs> you know it's to actually encourage each other and, it, and it's a great way to sort of set the scene that that when we're doing out of the box we really should respect each other and have even if our opinions are totally different to the person sat next to us that that's actually okay and, and I think it's been really good for the children to realize that it is okay to have a different opinion from the person next to me and it's also okay for me to have an identical opinion to somebody else as well I, I think the children have, have I, I, I did initially allow them to put hands up to um, answer questions or, or make their contribution because that's what they were used to doing in class but I actually ended up sort of saying we're not going to do hands up here because we are going to really listen to each other mm. and you know if you think someone's finished speaking and you want to say something just take it in turns but if you really listen to each other you won't need to put your hands up and and that, and that was really it for, for the one of the other class teachers who walked through the hall and saw us doing this I think it was quite a revelation really that even like five six-year-olds who would normally be so fidgety and you know had been trained to put their hands up by this point but they could take it in turns and really listen to each other and listen to each other's opinions and and share what they were really thinking about the story that's wonderful that's that's a real that's real good dialogue isn't it mm. i mean out of the box comes from deep tour which um which tula valconen in finland has created and she describes it as a way of dialogue and a way and in that broader sense of way of how to be with each other so that's really modeling how we can be different rather than confrontational and, and just this is my opinion this is my opinion you're actually modeling how to listen well and respect and and you know with all my years experience as a teacher I was actually pleasantly surprised at how well they did it even just from the very very first time and because I'd, I'd warned them at the beginning that if you can't get it right we'll have to go back to putting your hands up but I think they really wanted to have the freedom to be able to speak when they wanted to speak. Um, I think often in a, in a school situation, you know, hands up is a necessary tool, but, mm -hmm. but children don't necessarily get the freedom to speak when they're ready to speak. Mm -hmm. um, and so to know that they had that freedom, they, I think they really respected it and, and actually went with the flow of it. And, and needed no training whatsoever other than me to say this is what we're going to do and, and they just went with the flow of it and that was I think a real benefit for the children for their ability to be able to have a conversation to be able to 
listen to one another, to, to disagree, agree with one another, uh, and just take things further as the story and the thinking developed, which they just did automatically without almost any training, as if it was completely within them already. Mm. Well, that's out of the box, really, isn't it, Wendy? So totally out of the box. I think you've summed up really what the heart of out of the box is there. If, if that's yeah. if that if they the child we're allowing the children to do what what they can do anyway. Um, and, and I wonder if that could spill out into other areas or, or their lives or, um, yeah, just a new way of, of being uh, with each other in the classroom. It's really great. It was, well, it was quite interesting speaking to one of the teachers um, after one of the sessions that this particular class had had, as a lot of children that age do, because they're sort of uh, you know, late key stage one children who are constantly falling out with each other and having Barneys at, at sort of playtime and stuff like that. And I, I did the story of the monster for, for the con conflict resolution. And uh, she said that they kept talking about this back in the classroom and in the playground. She, do you remember the story? That means we need to do this and we need to do that. And we need to listen to each other and we need to wait our turn. And we need all, all the, and they were using the story to help them develop their ability to get on better in the classroom. So it you know, clearly was having a, a very beneficial effect on their mm. behavior, having mm. just done that one story. And that was the children saying? The children saying it, because the teacher, the teacher, the class teacher hadn't seen them do the story. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I'd fed back to her what we had been doing, um, but she hadn't witnessed the story and seen how they'd responded to it. But she saw the net results mm. back in the classroom and the, the you know, it, it didn't obviously eliminate all disagreement within them, but it yeah. certainly helped to reduce yeah. the amount of issues she was having to resolve at the end of every playtime mm. because they, they had been really thinking about that story mm. and, and acting upon it. Mm. It's in giving them a language, but it's really interesting how children really do understand fairness. And I've been reading a lot about Vivian um, uh, Gus and Pally, or Paley, um, and in her classrooms, the children, they teach, they taught her how to be fair and, and how to, to be with each other in a very community way. Uh, uh, even though she was really, really high, high up, that was high on her agenda, she still was learning from the children. So that's really interesting the children can can do that for themselves mm. absolutely I, mm. I think we have a lot to learn from children actually I mean I, I know through my teaching career you, you think you're the one that's doing all the teaching but at, but actually if you really listen to children they've still got something to teach you even as an adult so absolutely thank you is there any other um ways that you're seeing out or you've seen out of the box um, have an impact on children's well-being or on or on their, their learning? There, there was a, an occasion when um, the Ukraine war had just broken out and the head teacher was um, very concerned about the way the children were responding to having heard the news about this at home and hearing their parents talk about it and so on. Uh, and so she had done a whole school assembly on this and, and just purely as it happened I was taking a group that day and the, the session got delayed slightly because of the assembly but we were actually doing the monster story which is all about conflict resolution so it, it purely it was just it was the right thing clearly to, to be doing that day and because of the assembly they had just had and the thoughts of the children they were having the the sort of response to the story was very influenced by that recent thinking um, and, and you could see it as it was developing, they were really sort of unpacking some of those feelings mm -hmm. that they had, their worries that they had had about what was going on so far away in the world and they had no control over it. But I, but I think it helped them to realise that, well, yes, we might have problems around us and we can deal with just those problems and we, we don't need to worry about the bigger problems that are happening somewhere else. And, and we can just, as long as we keep sorting out our own problems this end, you know, everything will be okay. And, and, and that was, it was really quite important to obviously that group of children. Um, I sort of made a mistake of offering them the option to play with the felt. Well, a, a particular child who I suspected might have had special needs. Um, and, you know, I said, what would you like to add to the story? And he came over and tipped over the entire um, set of felts over the whole story and said, the bomb's gone off. And I thought, mm. <laughs> 
how are we going to resolve this one? But I, I thought, well, I'm going to trust the process and I'm going to allow the children to see how they're going to resolve this. Um, you know, normally in my teacher hat, I would have wanted to tell him off. And I thought, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to allow the children to solve this. And it was very, very interesting to how other children started to come out and move some of the pieces of felt to make something positive out of them. So there was one child who came out and collected a whole load of the yellow um, circles to say, oh, and the sun's coming out because it's beautiful weather now. And, you know, and, and gradually the picture evolved into something that, you know, we can, we can resolve things. We can make what could be something really bad and destructive actually into something really positive and that we don't have to leave it in this huge mess. And, and it was really wonderful to see how they just unpacked it all in a different way. That's lovely. And it's um, hearing what you did was just keep out of the way, mm. kept out of the way and allowed yeah. the children to and, and, and it went against my instinct as a teacher. <laughs> you know, I wanted to control it, <laughs> but, um, um, but I, I'm, I'm learning that the process of opening the box, you know, out of the box really means you need to step back and trust the process and allow the children to let you learn something. And, and certainly that was one of those occasions where my initial thought of, oh, how am I gonna resolve this? How am I going to resolve it? Mm. But I thought, no, it's not me that's got to resolve this. It's the children who are going to do it. And, and they did a fantastic job. So, you know, it, it is, uh, yeah, trust the process because wow. it really, yeah, I, I was, I learned a lot that day too. <laughs> that's, that's really, a really special um, moment and, and so so important for us to to hear about the fact that it's the storytellers themselves that need to do the the work and be mindful of what we're what we're doing and be able to trust the process trust the children trust the community let go of control allow the play and and just see what happens and and there's so much more learning that can can go on for the children when we do that isn't there uh, absolutely so certainly in that situation because I, I i my instinct as a teacher was oh panic i need to rescue this mm. <laughs> and i thought no i'm i'm not actually the teacher here today i'm just a volunteer in school and i can step back out of role and allow them to resolve it which was mm. It felt like a big moment to me as, as the storyteller, really, to, to let go that much. But I think it was a really key learning point for me as a storyteller that, yeah, trust the process. <laughs> Fabulous. Thank you, Wendy. Is there anything else that you that you wanted to share that you've been? Um, just just a, a one, one thing that I suppose as story developers, we, we've often been talking about. And it's a hot topic really in education at the moment. And then that's the, the idea of diversity uh, and actually meeting children's needs and, and considering the diversity uh, amongst your class, uh, mm -hmm. both you know, from, from a gender perspective, from a sexuality perspective, from a race perspective. And I, and I think one of the lovely things about the out of the box stories is we make a huge effort to make it very gender neutral and not at all stereotypical. And so that no matter what part of diversity of humankind you happen to belong to, you should be able to access that story. Um, and I think that's really a really valuable part of Out of the Box in that it's there for everybody. It is not a particular type of person that is going to relate to it or open up to it or learn something from it. It, it is there for absolutely everybody. Mm. Thank you, Wendy. That, that's, yeah, that is absolutely at the heart of, of how, and you're part of the story development team, how we, we've been using the language very intentionally. And that, I guess that also allows everybody to enter into it, but it also gives a very inclusive language to the children. Um, yeah, and in, yes, inclusive ways of being. Yeah, thank you. And it, and it demonstrates an, an acceptance of diversity as well. Yeah. Uh, I, I think historically, um, no matter where you've been in the world, I, I dare say that, that there have been places and times and attitudes that have caused diversity to be punished, really. Um, I think we're starting to live in a much fairer world and by demonstrating that through these stories 
hopefully we're, we're growing another generation of people who will be much more accepting, much more loving and, and caring of people around them who are slightly different from them. Mm. Um, you know, and to, uh, to understand that being different from a, another person is nothing wrong with that. So, uh, you know, that I can only believe that it would make for a much better and happier society if we're growing children who are learning to think like this. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's a really good place to end, Wendy. Yeah, because in the end, yeah, like it's all about, it's all about in the end how we are and how we love. Uh, yeah. yeah. So that leads really to important. love and relationships. Yeah. Thank you so much, Wendy. It's no been problem. a real pleasure to hear how, how you've been using out of the box in school. Thank you. You're welcome.